59 years old male patient with probable stroke was brought to emergency on examination his airway seemed obstructed so the noisy breathing airway is obstructed and saturation is dipping this is a sign of obstructed breathe obstructed airway obstructed airway if the air passage is not clear the patient will have noisy breathing noisy breathing and his accessory muscles etc will be over uh, used right so and uh, let's say saturation will be also on the lower side what is the intervention to be done in this patient so it's a stroke patient stroke patient means non trauma so i just simply divide the patients who come into the icu uh, in emergency into division trauma patient and non trauma patient when we plan for the opening of the obstructed area so divide the patient into trauma and non trauma when we plan for opening the airway we have to do any maneuver to opening open the airway opening the airway maneuver when we have to apply the opening the airway maneuver right there are two maneuver which opens the airway right one is what so what are the options let us first see the option laryngoscopy and intubation so what is the intervention what is the intervention to be done in this patient the first in immediate intervention head tilt chin lift second option jaw thrust recovery position to be made okay now first laryngoscopy and intubation well we may require in this patient but that is not the first thing we do if the airway is obstructed it's an emergency and immediately we have to do some maneuver to make it unobstructed second is head tilt chin lift if it is non trauma patient non trauma we always go for head tilt chin lift head tilt chin lift so head tilt chin lift with one hand we tilt the head backward and with the other hand we lift the chin forward this pulls the tongue which is the main culprit in these patient to cause obstruction so the non trauma patient and in trauma patient we go for something called jaw thrust so why we go for jaw thrust in trauma patient i'll just tell in a moment so this is a non trauma patient it's an emergency obstructed airway so what is the immediate maneuver which will we'll do we will immediately do head tilt chin lift head tilt chin lift so this should be the answer okay now well, let's talk about head tilt and jaw thrust head tilt chin lift and jaw thrust these are the two very important maneuver to open an obstructed airway so maneuvers maneuvers to open an obstructed airway obstructed airway head tilt chin lift and jaw thrust in head tilt chin lift you can see with one hand we are tilting the head backward and with the other hand we are lifting the chin upward right so in this there is a movement on the cervical spine there is a movement on the cervical spine okay so there is a movement on cervical spine so there in this maneuver we have movement of cervical spine and in jaw thrust we stabilize the head and neck with both our palm and just protrude the mandible upward or forward so there is no movement of no movement of cervical spine right so in cervical spine injury in cervical spine injury we want the if suspected cervical spine injury we don't want head and neck to move we don't want head and neck to move we want a stable head and neck position right and when we want this we have to go for jaw thrust maneuver okay so in trauma victim we always go for jaw thrust and in non trauma we go for head tilt chin lift why because this is a better maneuver to open the airway so let us talk about head tilt chin lift now this maneuver the image i have shown you this is head tilt chin lift okay now in this maneuver head tilt chin lift the tongue is lifted tongue is lifted and airway becomes unobstructed unobstructed so this is the purpose of doing this maneuver this is best maneuver to open airway best maneuver to open airway to open airway right so head tilt chin lift is the best maneuver to open the airway okay now this in what is the demerit of this maneuver demerit is movement of head and neck joint movement of head and neck joint head and neck joint 
right? So when there is movement of head and neck joint, right, this should not be done in trauma victim. So not first maneuver, not first maneuver, maneuver in trauma victim, trauma victim, right? Not first maneuver in trauma victim, remember this, okay? Jaw thrust. Now jaw thrust, this maneuver also opens the airway by lifting the tongue. So this maneuver, maneuver also opens the airway, opens the airway by lifting the tongue. So it is also doing the same thing, right? This is inferior to head tilt chin lift. What is the benefit? No movement of head and neck joint. No movement of head and neck joint. So when there is no movement of head and neck joint, this is maneuver, maneuver of choice for trauma victim, for trauma victim, okay? Remember this, okay? So this was head tilt and chin lift. Now the fourth option was rather recovery position to be made. So what is the recovery position? This is the recovery position, okay? This is something called recovery position. What is the, what is the benefit of recovery position? This position prevents the aspiration to happen. This keeps the food or vomitus, prevents the food and vomitus to go in the respiratory tract, okay? So this position prevents aspiration, prevents aspiration. So if it prevents aspiration, what are the patients who are at a high risk of aspiration? Unconscious patient. So unconscious patient. So what did I tell you in the previous question? Unconscious patient, what do we do? Unconscious patient, we go for BLS approach. Conscious patient, we go for primary ABCDE approach and secondary approach. For unconscious, unresponsive patient, we go for BLS approach. So in BLS approach, we have to see the pulse and breathing. So unconscious patient, with pulse and breathing present, both present, are not in respiratory arrest, not in cardiac arrest. So these patients are unconscious with both pulse and breathing. So what do we do in them? We make a recovery position. We make a recovery position, okay? So we make a recovery position. So this is the position we have to make in these patients, okay? Keep it in mind. So this was our fourth option, okay? recovery position to be made. This is only done in an unconscious patient with pulse and breathing present. Laryngoscopy and intubation we may need to do require in these patients, but it would be after opening the airway when we have oxygenated and now we have time to perform laryngoscopy and intubation, right? So it may be, may or may not be required, okay, in this patient, but it is not the first maneuver. First maneuver is head tilt and chin lift, okay? So this is how you have to approach the question.